Hi everyone, it's Salia from Hustle Season and today I wanted to do a video which is basically a short discussion on just something that I noticed recently that has been irking me a little bit. I don't actually know 100% where I stand on the issue so I figured I would do a video where I talk about it and hopefully I can get some of your opinions and then maybe we can have a discussion and maybe I can have a better hold on where I stand at the end of all of this. But essentially, so far for the beginning of 2019, I don't actually, I think, no, I think I did mention it in my 2019 goals, but one of my goals was to just read more books from diverse authors. I wanted that to include both different sexualities, different, you know, experiences, like whatever it might be. Um, so far, it's mostly just been people of color that I've been reading. I've only read three books and I've liked it and I am slowly trying to make my way. Um, I still think I have not read enough LGBTQ books for my channel and I just, I want to change that. Um, so I will dive into that very soon too. But anyways, so far, the three books that I've read for 2019 were Restore Me, which is by a POC author, but the book itself I'm not going to include really for the purpose of this discussion. But the other two that I read were Pride by Ibi Zaboy, as well as I just finished American Panda by Gloria Chow. First of all, I loved both of these books and I will probably do a separate wrap-up where I discuss what I liked and didn't like about them. But in terms of just the diversity of it and the perspectives that they offer and the representation, I was there for all of that. And it actually, it wasn't until I started going on Goodreads to see why people didn't like it or what the negative reviews were for the book that I started realizing some of the challenges that exist for authors who want to write a story with a diverse character or want to bring that different perspective. It started to make me realize that it is actually harder to get people to want to buy these books or to want to read these stories um, and just more difficult for people to accept them in general and I wanted to talk a bit about that. I mean I think part of it is some weird form of racism but that's not overtly what I want to talk about today. Mostly I just wanted to discuss some of the negative I guess perspectives I should think about how I want to phrase this. Basically, some of the things I read didn't sit so well with me and I just wanted to talk about them. So that's the purpose of today's video. And I can just, I guess, start with some of the comments that I essentially read. So for both Pride and American Panda, there was actually similar types of comments for the reviews that didn't love the book. Some of them were just story-wise, like they didn't like the romance or they didn't like an aspect of it, which was fine. But I found that a lot of them actually felt like the main character Character, it was pushed too hard where they come from and what their background story is and that to me was kind of weird because when I was reading these books I never felt like it was being shoved down my throat or I was being beat over the head with how hood Zuri is from Pride or how strict May's parents are in American Panda and reading these comments I was kind of like I don't know if these people recognize that when you're from a different culture when you're from a different ethnicity or background that whatever that culture is permeates every aspect of your life and it's not like you get snapshots of it when you're an outsider for that culture but for that person that is the life that they live and it's going to be a part of them in every single situation and so it kind of bothered me that a lot of the criticisms for these books was that they're to whatever they're trying to be and to me I was like how is that even possible like how how is a book about a girl from the hood in Brooklyn you know how is it being sh shoved down your throat how poor she is like if you grow up like that that is what is on your mind and that will affect how you see things it will affect everything you do like I I just felt like it was weird because we never question I don't want to say white because I don't think that this actually applies to all white so I'm gonna say like Western stuff, I guess. But what I mean is by like the default, like the white Canadian or white American person, usually American, but because I'm Canadian, I don't want to leave out the Canadian. So I'm going to say North American, Western or whatever. Like, I don't think that when we go and watch a movie, we're ever complaining that this is too white or that. That doesn't sound right either because now some people do, but do you know what I mean? Like no one's ever complaining that it's being shoved down our throats, how much Western culture is permeating this movie. And that's because that's the accepted and that's the norm and that's what you expect. And I think part of it is that when you cater this book about this Taiwanese American girl, which is what American Panda is about, when you pitch this idea to a bunch of people who are from the Western culture, based off of these reviews that I'm reading, it feels like they're used to experiencing Taiwanese or 
Asian culture even in small doses like when they decide to go out for Chinese food every month or whatever that is them being cultured and experiencing that culture and that's enough for them but when they read this you know 300 page book and it's part of every single scene and it's always there suddenly it's too much and it's being shoved down their throats or beaten over their heads and to me that just seems weird like how is that too much culture for you do you know what I mean like I just feel like I, I just want to see does that is that make anyone else uncomfortable or does that sit weirdly with other people because I feel like that criticism just means that you're not that open to that culture and that you don't recognize that like your culture or wherever you come from like that is a part of you in every single situation it's something that you always think about it's something that always affects your decisions and always will affect the lens through which you're looking at something so how is it too much like I <laughs> I guess that's what really bothered me recently about these comments. It just made me realize how difficult it can be for people who want to make these stories about characters who don't follow the norm and try to target that to a mass audience. I like finally kind of saw some of the difficulty. I guess maybe I was naive before because I've always loved these stories. I've always thought, you know, like it's so fresh, it's so relatable in comparison to everything else that I've read. But I guess realizing that I'm probably a minority in that and that despite that, the mass majority of people when they read this their first impression is that like it was cute it was fun for five minutes but a whole book wasn't necessary I got the point and that to me was heartbreaking I just feel like I don't think you got the point if you were sick of it after a few chapters so I don't even know if this is a discussion anymore or like a rant but I was just really frustrating to read these comments and I was like when you deduct stars from you know this primarily western based fantasy novel it is because of some really big mistakes like you're really really analyzing you're very forgiving about a lot of things and then when it comes to these diverse books it's like the smallest thing you're just throwing stars off and I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel like the standard with which we judge them are so different if a western novel did the same sorts of flaws I still think it would be rated higher than these books with diverse characters it's just frustrating I think there's so many reasons for it too I think one there's not enough of them first of all so when a single book is put out there, there's this expectation for it to be the greatest, most representative, most all-encompassing of what it means to be that nationality or to be that sexuality. And so there's just a lot of pressure on it. And I think obviously the more that we publish books about diverse people, that hopefully that will go away and hopefully, you know, like people will become a bit more mellowed out and judge it appropriately for what it is. I think too, and this was touched upon in American Panda, is that it's also difficult difficult to market these books to the people of the nationality which it is representing and that's for a couple of reasons too it's because so let's say I was Taiwanese and I read this book American Panda and it didn't match exactly my experience that maybe I wouldn't have felt seen and then suddenly I would have criticisms of it too so that was another complaint is that you really have to hit home with the person of that ethnicity for them to think that this is a real representation of their culture on top of trying to convince these other people who may or may not care about your culture that this is interesting and fascinating and important and then you take into account that there are people from that culture who probably don't even necessarily associate with their culture or are trying to reject it or have adopted more of the you know western lifestyle which is always the case right like like I think kids of immigrants at least are always like not 50 50 whatever the percentages might differ from people but everybody picks and chooses different things from the two cultures that they amalgamate into whatever they choose to do and they always have a bit of both influences so so on top of all that you're trying to represent these people who even though we all have had a similar experience everyone's come out of it slightly different and probably looking for something slightly different in these novels that they read I suddenly realized how difficult it can be to try to take this story that's shared by so many people and this experience that's shared by so many people make one novel that is relatable enough to everyone so that it can be marketable to everyone so that it can sell and make books and it just it made me kind of sad to think that it's that hard for them to share their story <laughs> because at the end of the day I feel like we're not gonna get more of them if we don't support them and if we're being this critical of them in the earliest stages like that's just not fair and I think it's not fair necessarily even to judge them with the amount 
amount of like to judge them even at the same level of some of the western stuff we read because that industry has been going on for years and it's had so much time to develop and you know it started off as trash probably too and then you know made its way improved made its way people complained at some point they were like we should throw some feminism in there at some point they were like we should throw some of this or that and change stuff up and so I feel like these books with the diverse characters or these diverse authors it's in its infancy and I think it's not really fair to judge it by the same standards I also think because there's such a limited market for authors of color or from different backgrounds sexualities whatever religions and stuff I think because of that the few that make it through have to be so much better than the like 15 white people who make it through because you know by default if there's more spots for these other authors then you don't necessarily need to be as good but if you're fighting against like not only are you fighting against all the white people you're also fighting against all the other black people because you can be the only black one there like I just feel like I don't know it just made me really frustrated that it's that difficult and I guess the whole point of this video is that I wanted us to try to support people more and to just appreciate these stories for what they are and not necessarily even have to feel like we've related to them on some level like don't get me wrong the reasons that I loved Pride and American Panda recently was because I was able to relate to them on a level that I probably haven't with so many other books there are stuff in American Panda even though I'm not Taiwanese her relationship with her mom like in my own life it's something that I've gone through so much that whole idea that when you're raised here and you start learning about feminism and some of the rights that women should have sometimes your own culture and the traditions that your culture has that your parents are putting on you are not the nicest towards women and trying to help your mom come to realize that and also have her start challenging her culture like it's something I mean maybe, I'm, I'm sure white people go through this too to be honest but seeing that from that perspective that was something for example that even though I was Persian I was like I can relate to this 100% and I think that even if these stories don't mimic exactly how your experience was they probably still have value and I think just supporting each other in and of itself is super helpful but I also think to recognize that for a lot of these people a lot of these authors these stories that they write that are very autobiographical especially like if you think of a very large expansive sea as well so if I include that one along with American Panda I think part of the reason these people write the stories isn't even for us it's literally for them to get this story off their chest. There are a lot of people out there who don't realize what it's like to live your whole life knowing you're going to be misunderstood at every step of the way and that's in so many different ways from people not recognizing your name always misspelling it to people never understanding you know your family dynamics or never truly understanding why you do what you do or never understanding why you don't know something or why you act a certain way or where you're coming from when you're trying to explain certain things like when you are not the main I don't even know how to say it like when you're not part of that main culture or when you are only half part of it but there's this other part that's also influencing the way you do things you learn that you're always going to have to explain yourself and that you might not make sense to people and that you're never fully going to be seen and all these little struggles that you're going through you recognize that no one's really going to understand them and that you can tell them they maybe care they maybe don't care but no one's going to relate to you on that level and that's something that I think a lot of immigrants or a lot of people who don't follow that norm like I assume this is probably similar for LGBTQ or like members of that community as well although I, I can't speak from experience but I assume it's similar to that is that there's always gonna be this part of you that you can't share with them and that you know will always be misunderstood and carrying with that sorry carrying that with you for your whole life is this huge burden and I don't think some people realize that and so when these authors finally get that voice when they finally have a platform they share that story and I don't think that story is for us I think it's them finally wanting to share with the world like this is what I went through and I want people to know and like that's it it's not meant to be the most relatable thing for everyone out there it's meant to be their story and meant to show you that this was one experience and it's just for us to recognize that they went through that and they had that hardship in their life and that's it at least in my opinion that's what that story is about and once they get that story out then they can open this discussion and other people can share their stories and we can start to make a more comprehensive view of the whole thing so yeah so I, I don't think we should even really be judging these stories like I think I think they're more for themselves and I think 
think it's just to give you a look into their life. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess the way that people who are constantly misunderstood, it's never just one or two big events that make you frustrated. It's all the tiny microaggressions. It's all the tiny little things The you know, that mean nothing to that one person. But when you've lived through that 50,000 times, how you answer that question, like, where are you from? No, where are you really from though? You know, or when people assume you're certain sexuality, but you're actually something else and just constantly having to tell people and then having them give you whatever weird look or whatever it is that little experience that you go through over and over and over and it never stops and to those people it seems small but for you it's like this never ending you know these little things that chip away at you I feel like that's why it's a burden and then we make the story or we <laughs> I guess people of color make this story and then to have someone tell you that this was too much this was just like you kept telling me how poor you were you just kept telling me how hood you were and you kept telling me how Persian or Asian or gay you are and you were shoving it down my throat it was just too much it's like <sighs> Like it's also too much when I have to deal with this on a daily basis, 24 seven, and you can't handle it for one book. I don't know, it just, it really makes me mad. It really frustrates me because now I can see why it's so difficult for these authors to share their stories and to have people accept it. And we're constantly criticizing when really we should just be supporting. Hopefully if we can support these stories, then we can move on from this and finally just have stories where people are diverse from different backgrounds. And that doesn't necessarily need to be the whole story. It influences the story and like plays a role in the dynamics in the story but doesn't need to be the be all end all of the story but right now I feel like we're at a point where people aren't even woke enough to understand what it's like to not be exactly the norm that society expects you to be so we're stuck at this level where people need to just tell you their story like this and I, I think I mean again I haven't read enough LGBTQ plus books but I feel like that genre is moving on a little bit because I think it's been a, like there's been more books around it and I think that it's moving moved on past the all gay stories are about coming out or just being gay and repressed and then coming out and it's moving on to like you know different genres different things and now it's just being incorporated and I feel like An Ember of the Ashes is also another good example and what's the Tomi Adeyemi book? Um, Children of Blood and Bone. Those are other good examples too where it's fantasy but it happens to be a person of color as the main character and I think that's the eventual like future of it. Not necessarily just fantasies but moving even past that where we don't need to describe every microaggression for people to even understand that it's a thing and to educate people. We can move past that and once everyone knows that that is the reality that they face, go into more nuanced stories and go into, or not more nuanced, but move into a different direction where it plays a role in the story but doesn't necessarily need to to be the only selling factor because right now I think it's targeted to those people like I, I don't know I think it's in a weird stage right now where there's not even enough stories so that fact in and of itself makes the story but I, I want it to become so bland well not so bland but I want the market to become so saturated with stories like that that we can then move past that and have this whole genre develop further or you know not even be a genre do you see what i'm saying I, I hope i'm making sense like i want us to move past a book being unique simply because there's a person of color in it like i want that to become so normal that we can then move on to the next step yeah <laughs> gonna leave it at that. Okay, I think that is it for my little rant discussion. I tried really hard. Hopefully I was sensitive in talking about this and I really hope I didn't offend anybody inadvertently or use the wrong terminologies. I was a little worried because I knew this was a taboo topic, but I tried my best to be fairly objective about it and I just wanted to give my opinion. I'm more than happy to hear what other people think and if you are one of those people who's read a book about diversity or about some different experience and you felt like it was just too much and it took away from the story please talk to me I'd love to hear I won't hate on you or anything I'd love to just see your point of view so yeah <laughs> that is it for my discussion I will see you next time or soon or something bye